Tennessee's At Home Learning Series for Literacy. Today's lesson is for all our second graders out there, though all children are welcome to tune in. This lesson is the fourth in our series. My name is Mrs. Ledford and I teach second grade at Prescott South Elementary School in Cookville, Tennessee. I'm so excited to be your teacher for this lesson. Welcome to my virtual classroom. Today, we are going to continue learning about insects and their main body parts by exploring more information and the relationship of the words microscopic and gigantic. At the end of today's lesson, you will get a chance to create a project highlighting two very different insects. Listen carefully so you will know exactly how to complete your project. Oh, projects are my favorite. Before we get started, to participate fully in our lesson today, you will need at least one piece of paper, a pen or a pencil, and if you made a list of predictions with me yesterday, go ahead and get that back out so we can look at those today. If you didn't get to see our previous lessons, you can find them on our website at www.tn.gov slash education. That's www.tn.gov slash education. You can still tune into today's lesson if you haven't seen any of our others, but it might be more fun if you first go back and watch our other lessons since we'll be talking about things we learned previously. Okay, let's begin. In our previous lesson, we learned some very important vocabulary words and we were holding up our V yesterday. These words helped us better understand what we read about. Let's review these vocabulary words now. The first word we're going to look at today is the word abdomen. You say it, abdomen, very good. This word is a noun. The definition of this word is the end part of an insect's body, the body segment that contains the digestive and reproductive structures. An example of this word is the abdomen is the largest body part of most insects. You might hear the plural form as I read too. What would the plural form of this word be? Think about the ending on plural words. Abdomens, yes, very good. Now, let's keep moving and we will talk about our next vocabulary word today, which is this word. Do you remember how to say it? Exoskeletons, you say it. Great job, and this word is also a noun, which means it's a person, place, or thing. The definition is the stiff body coverings of insects providing support and protection. They wear their skeletons on the outside of their body. An example, it, a sentence would be, the thick exoskeletons on beetles protect them from being squashed by larger animals. You might even hear the singular form. What do you think the singular form of this word would be? Exoskeleton, very good. The last word today, boys and girls, that we're going to review is thorax. You say it. Thorax. This word is a noun. The definition is the middle part of an insect's body between the head and the abdomen. The body segment contains the heart and the leg attachments. An example of this word is Joshua's favorite dragonflies have a bright green thorax. You might even hear the plural forms, thoraxes or thoracis. Let's add a new one for today, boys and girls. We're going to say this word together, microscopic. You say it. When I say that word, do you hear another familiar word inside that word? Yes, microscope. Very good. This word is an adjective, which means it describes a noun. Microscopic refers to something that is too small to be seen without the aid of a microscope. 
which is a tool that you can look through to see things that are very, very small. Now, an example of this would be tiny microscopic bugs live in the pond behind my house, but they're too small for me to see with just my eyes alone. <clears throat> now that we know some important vocabulary words, let's begin. We've already looked at, learned a lot about insects in the lesson so far, but let's review some things we already know that insects are the largest group of animals on earth. The fly, the narrator from the first story, told the story about, <coughs> excuse me, about how a variety of insects live in nearly every part of the world. Can you remember the one habitat that um, insects cannot live in? That's right, the ocean. And finally, the difference between social and solitary, remember what that is? Very good. That social insects live in groups or colonies and solitary group insects live in one, uh, live alone or in pairs. Thumbs up if you remembered some of these awesome facts today. Great job, I see lots of thumbs out there. Today, we will see what we remember about insects, and I want to review our list of predictions that we made yesterday. Um, so first, if you'll get those out, and if you don't have those, that's okay, you can help me with my list. I want to review our list of predictions to see if we can confirm or debunk this list of predictions. And finally, I want to look at our new vocabulary words and write two sentences about our new vocabulary. So yesterday we made this list of predictions before we read our story and we were trying to decide what made an insect an insect. So my first prediction was I predict that having wings makes an insect an insect. Can we confirm this prediction or debunk it? Well, yesterday we read that not all insects have wings. Um, so we have to debunk that prediction. Um, my other prediction stated that all insects have six legs. Can we confirm that prediction or debunk? that prediction. Well, I remember we read all about caterpillars and we learned that they had how many total legs? Do you remember? I'll give you a clue. They have eight pairs of legs. And we said a pair is two things. So if we count by twos eight different times, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. How many total legs do caterpillars have? 16 total legs. So do all insects have six legs? No, not all insects. In fact, several have more and some have even less. So look back at your predictions now. Were they confirmed or debunked like mine? Well, what did we learn makes an insect an insect? We know that an insect has how many main body parts? Can you remember? If you said three, do a little happy dance. Great job. An insect has three main body parts. Can you say them with me? Head, thorax, abdomen. Very good, boys and girls. And they also have a special kind of skeleton. Do you remember what we call that? An exoskeleton. Wonderful. And that means they wear their skeletons on the outside of their body like protective coverings. So were your predictions correct or debunked? So great job, boys and girls. Now I'm going to ask you a few questions to just review. The first question is hard, but I know you can do it. What do all insects have? Way to go. You said 
three body parts, head, thorax, abdomen, and I heard somebody else say they have exoskeletons or hard outer coverings. If you got that answer correct, I want you to jump up and down three times for being such a great learner. All right, in the read aloud from our last lesson, you saw pictures of many different insects. Based on what you heard and the pictures that you saw, what do you think the author wanted us to know about different kinds of insects? Wow, those are some great answers. You're right. I think the author was trying to explain what makes an insect an insect and that although there are many different kinds of insects, they all have what? pretty much the same body parts, right? You have been really paying attention. If you got that answer right, I want you to give yourself a round of applause. Nice job, boys and girls. You are so smart. Lastly, let's think about our friend, the cricket. I'm gonna try to pull up a picture of our friend, the cricket. Okay, so do you remember, you'll have to think back, on what part of the cricket's body its ears were located. You are so smart. You're right. The cricket's ears are located on its front legs, just below its knee. If you got that answer right, I want you to kiss your brain. Say, good job, brain. All right, boys and girls, let's go back to our picture with all of our different insects. When you have a group of pictures like this, it's called a collage. So let's look, at, look back at these insects' mouth parts. And do you remember which insects bite or chew their food like people? That's right. If you said the cockroach, do a little happy dance. How can you tell? Look at that picture of our friend the cockroach. Well, you can tell by the shape of its mouth. It does not have a long tube like a straw for sucking or a sharp object for piercing. Do you remember which insect has a mouth shaped like a straw and it uses it to suck out sap from the plant leaves and stem? I heard the right answer out there. If you said aphid, great job, very good. Aphids, give me a high five, woohoo. So which insect has the long tongue that's used to suck, suck nectar out of flowers? That's right, it's the bee, very good. And last question, do you remember which insect has a sharp mouth part that is used to pierce the skin of its prey. I'll give you a clue. You've probably been bitten by one. If you said a mosquito, that's correct. Two thumbs up for you. You're on a roll. Good job, boys and girls. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to compare and contrast your body to an insect's body. When we compare and contrast, sometimes we use something called a Venn diagram. We compare the things in the middle that are alike about the two objects, and we contrast how the objects are different. So show me compare and contrast. Compare and contrast. So we're gonna compare how your body is like an insect's body and contrast how it's different from an insect's body. In what ways is an insect skeleton different from your skeleton? I heard one student say that an insect skeleton is on the outside of its body, and that is called the exoskeleton. Great job, air five. All right, in what ways is the insect skeleton the same? 
our skeletons serve the same purpose. They want to protect and support our bodies and keep us upright. So they both have muscles attached to them. Great job. All right, boys and girls, let's change the picture that we're looking at. And we're going to scan ahead to this guy. Do you remember what this guy's name is? Very good. He's the caterpillar. And yesterday, I was telling you about his legs. He has some legs in the front and some legs in the back. Do you remember how many legs most insects have? Most insects? Most insects have six legs. That's right. But the caterpillar has more legs than that. Is it an insect? Why or why not? Hmm, is the caterpillar an insect even though he has more legs? Why or why not? I thought I could trick you with that one, but you're too smart. It is an insect. It has six true legs, therefore he is an insect. The other legs are called pro-legs. You say it, pro-legs or false legs. Great job. They kind of just help him stabilize on that leaf. All right, boys and girls, we have discussed lots of insect body parts today. If you could choose any insect feature, antennae, special mouth parts, legs, or wings to add to your own body. What would you choose and why? Today I want to take your piece of paper and you're going to write me one to two sentences telling me your answer. So I want you to try to answer in a complete sentence and you're going to try to turn my question around into a statement. So my question one more time was if you could choose any one insect feature, antennae, special mouth parts, more legs, or wings to add to your body, what would you choose and why? I'm going to give you a couple minutes to start your sentences. If you don't finish, that is okay. You can finish when we get through today. All right, boys and girls, I hope that you at least got to start your thought. If you didn't get to finish, I will give you more time at the end to finish your thought and finish your writing, and you can even illustrate it. So if I could add any insect feature to my body, I would choose wings. I would like to try to fly and see things from a different perspective. All right, boys and girls, I heard some really cool reasons for the different body parts that you want. Um, I want to move along and talk a little bit more about that vocabulary word we started today, microscopic. In our read aloud, you heard that some insects like butterflies and grasshoppers have wings, whereas others like fleas and microscopic lice do not. Say the word microscopic with me. Microscopic. Very good. If something is microscopic, it is very, very small. So small, you would need that special tool called a microscope to see it. Sometimes the germs that cause many diseases are microscopic. So they can't just be seen with our eyes. You have to use that special tool to see them. Can you name some other things that are microscopic or very, very small? Great job. You have been listening very well. Let's review the word we've been talking about. Do you know the opposite or the antonym of the word microscopic? 
Hmm, I'm hearing some good answers. Big, large, or gigantic. You say it, gigantic. So the opposite or the antonym is gigantic. So you have microscopic or gigantic. Very good. Gigantic means very, very large. If microscopic means very, very small, and since it's the opposite, gigantic means very, very large. Can you think of something that is gigantic or very, very large? Very good. Now we're going to play a little game. I'm going to say some things and if the thing that I name is very, very small, we're going to say, that is microscopic. And I want you to say it in your microscopic voice, your little, little voice. That is microscopic. And if what I name in the game is very, very large, you're going to say, that is gigantic. Okay, are you ready? So if I say something very, very small, what are you going to say? That is microscopic. If I name something that's very, very large, what are you going to say? That is gigantic. All right, boys and girls, let's play the game. What if I told you that I see something like a building that is 40 stories tall? Wow, that is gigantic. Great. Number two an insect that we can't see crawling through the soil. Good job, that is microscopic. Number three, the sun. That is gigantic, good job. Yes, the sun is gigantic. Okay, two more, the Pacific Ocean. Yes, you got it. It is gigantic. Okay, a single grain of sand on the beach. That's correct. That is microscopic. Wonderful, boys and girls. All right, you did such an excellent job. You know the difference between microscopic and gigantic now. Also, as we talked about today, you know the features of an insect's body. Name them really quick for me. Head, thorax, abdomen. Great job, boys and girls. So here's what I want to do for our practice today with our piece of paper that we got out earlier. And if you don't have a blank piece of paper, you can use the back of an old piece of paper. It's okay. So I've just got a blank piece of paper. And what I want you to do is we are going to draw a little bit today, and I want to show you how to fold it in half. So you can either fold it in half, depending on the size of your paper, you can either fold it in half like this or like this. I'm going to do it like this because my piece of paper is kind of small, and that will give me more room to draw. Okay, so we're going to do a little drawing. But first, we're going to fold our paper in halves. That's a little fraction term for you. Halves means two equal parts. One half, two half equals one whole. All right, boys and girls, so here's your task. I want you to, on one side of your paper, you are going to draw a microscopic insect that has three body parts on one side of your paper. Go ahead and I'll draw with you. We're gonna draw a microscopic insect that has three body parts and that's gonna be on one side of your paper. Boys and girls, I'm ready to show you my drawing. I bet your drawing looks a little bit better than mine. Can you see it? Can you see it now? It's microscopic, it's tiny, you hardly see it, right? All right, now, here's your next challenge. On the other half of your paper, you are gonna draw a gigantic insect with three body parts. 
Yes. All right, I'll draw with you. Everybody get started. You're gonna draw a gigantic insect with three main body parts. I'll go through here so I can give you some drawing inspiration. Oh boy. I'm not the best artist, boys and girls. I bet you're doing a better job than I am, but you can even label your, your insects body parts. So the top part is the head, the middle part is the thorax, and the last part is the abdomen. All right, I'll show you my drawing. So here's my little microscopic insect, and here's my gigantic insect. And you can see he has his antennae, and he has his head, his thorax, and his abdomen, the last part of his body. And he has how many legs? Six legs, because lots of insects have six legs. I see some excellent drawings out there. I know that you guys are drawing some microscopic insects and gigantic insects, and I think they look great. I also like how you included all three body parts. Go ahead and give yourselves a pat on the back. You did such an excellent job today. Boys and girls, if you finish your gigantic insect, don't forget, you can label these. You can label these with the head, the thorax, the abdomen. You can label one side microscopic like I did. And I'll help you spell that. Micro, M, I, C, R, O, scopic, S, C, O P I C microscopic. Good job. And you can label the other side gigantic. G I G A N T I C. And you learned antonyms are opposites today. You all did such an excellent job today. I'm so impressed. Boys and girls, I really enjoyed learning about insects with you today. I hope you had fun too. Thank you for inviting me into your home. I look forward to seeing you in our next lesson in Tennessee's at-home learning series. I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.